Good day, class. Um, you're welcome to today's lesson. My name is Remens Engineer Joshua Ivareva, the Senior Instructor with the Industrial Training Fund. Today, we're going to be looking at the lesson that says uh, types. Types and application. Application of protective devices. Protective devices. So in the last class, we looked at um, control devices. And in the control devices, we were able to discuss on the types of control devices and uses. We saw um, switch as a, a control devices. How different types of um, uh, switches operates. Then um, we looked at um, the contactor as a protective devices, the use of contactors as it, when it comes to do with um, uh, con connections, electrical connection, electrical circuits, operation in the industry. We looked at uh, the effect of overload relay, how it uh, works when it comes to electrical circuits. We also looked at um, relay, relay process in both in the industry, uh, domestic, as well as even in uh, to our microwaves, those beeping sound and all that uh, control, these are referred to as what? Solid state uh, relays. So today, like I said now, the next lesson, we're going to be looking at what types and application of what? Protective de relays. What is protective devices? A good protection system will minimize damage to what? The equipment. Electrical protection is a primary control for many of the electrical key risk areas and is used to minimize what? The risk. What do you take risk? What do you consider as what? Risk. In the sense that if you are working on electrical equipment or devices, as the user, you should be able to be conscious of what the hazards that is what? Around the, the equipment or around the environment. Because what you fear one is what? Electrocution. Electrocution. The shock, injuries, electrical bonds, shock itself. Shock, bonds. As well as what? Maybe fire incidents. Because of this, you decide to light, take cognizance of what? Protective devices. These are very, very important when it comes to electrical what? Circuit. But basically, the IE the I regulation, basically, we're going to be looking at two major, two major types of what? Protective uh, devices, which has to do with what? Two major devices. We'll be looking at what? One, fuse, common and important. Then, circuit, circuit breaker. In the course of this lesson, we're going to be looking at these two types of what? Protective devices, the fuse. What are we protecting against? We'll protect against what? Instantaneous short circuit current. We'll protect against what? Overcurrent. We'll protect against earth fault current, earth leakage current, earth continuity open or short circuit, reduction of phase to earth insulations. We protect against all this and we protect the equipment. And of course, there are devices that protects just the equipment. And of course, we have other devices that the earth leakage circuit breaker, the GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupter, these protect the user because it isolates the, 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 the circuit, the equipment. While you're making use of an equipment, electrical equipment, if there is a fault, it, it has yet to isolate you as the user from what? The equipment. So we're going to be looking at the fuse as the most simplest and common types of what? Protective devices. What is fuse? A fuse is an electrical protective device that operates to provide what? Overcurrent air operations or protections of an electrical what? circuit. It can be just a metal wire linked, just like a wire. This can be a fuse. Once it can mix, Depends on the current rating. 
it can melt, it can as well break or cut. So you see that from the material, how does uh, the fuse uh, melt or break? We have a fuse can bloom because the electrical current through the fuse is too what? It's too high. If the fuse rating is small and the current that passes through the fuse is higher, it can withstand for small time. But before you know, so long as the, the current rating is more than that of the fuse, it's meant the fuse. Because when there is a false current, the current will increase drastically. And to protect the equipment from such damaging current, it diffuses with what? Cut off. And the fuse cut off to protect the equipment from being what? Damaged. So the usual cause of high current is a 40 electrical, and a 40 electrical appliances, which the, the fuse can what? And of course, we have different types of fuse. We have fuse that we refer to it as uh, the wireable fuse. We have the wireable fuse. Of course, we have um, that is normally fuse you can replace with the same size of uh, fuse. So, though there have cases in rewirable, they have cases where you have both end terminals for depends on the manufacturer, the manufacturer design just to protect. But the fuse element, like you have in our houses, if it contacts, you remove and all that. If you check, it can be in a plastic form, it can be in a ceramic. The common now is in ceramic types where you can pull. If you check your metal board, now you pull the fuse. If you check, the fuse in there is just the wire. The wire inside the cable or the con conductor inside, usually um, gold plated type of uh, cable or copper wire that you see. But the other gadget is just for what? Rotation and what? Handy. So basically, what I said, fuse. Fuse is just like a wire that control. So we have other types like the cartridge. The cartridge types, that is seal. The seal, you have been to the um, transformer. You see, it totally enclosed, totally enclosed or what? The cartridge types of what? The fuse. You see it, you can move it. And many of you have seen um, in transformer, the small size transformer. And you see the original fuse that comes with it is just seal. You remove and place. Although in a transformer, we have what we refer to as what? High inrush what? Type of fuse. Or what is called to as a high voltage, uh, high rapture capacity. High rapture capacity types of uh, fuse. In this type, it's like very, very high. The fuse element of the high rush capacity is warmed by the shape. Depends on how it looks. You can see different sizes. Its effect is to avoid what? A higher what? Voltage or current that passes through. And of course, when it comes to different types, we still have what we refer to as the liquid type. Liquid type. Liquid type. The same high voltage, high voltage, uh, high storage capacity. We have different types of fuse and all that. So we have the extortion type, high voltage also, and then different types of fuses. And the effect is what? To break. It can be sealed. It can be sealed. It can be oil type, liquid. The content inside, you can see it like a glass type of fuse. So all these are for protection of uh, the equipment, okay? So we have, um, secondly, um, I said circuit breaker. It's another example. You see more explanation of the fuse and the material. Then um, the circuit breaker, circuit breaker, unlike the fuse, which operate once and then you replace. Circuit breaker can be maintained, can't be worked on because it has it sizes in a bigger word form. So a circuit breaker, you have like uh, what we refer to as miniature circuit breaker. Then we have miniature circuit breaker, which is the common rated current, not more than not more than uh, 100 amps. Not more than 100 amps. Circuit type breaker, miniature circuit breaker. Miniature circuit breaker. So which is the common type that has a single pole. It can be in the form of a single pole 
um, double pose or two pose or three pose as the case may be. And of course, we have the larger part that is molded case circuit breaker, molded case circuit breaker. So this takes over 2,500 amps, more or equal to 2,500 amps. Rating capacity of the type of circuit breaker. And of course, we have different operation of circuit breaker. Uses is for what? Tripping uh, techniques. It trips the circuit. We have thermal types, modded case, residual current devices. We have ground force circuit interrupter. Yes, the explanations on the material, you see how this different, but the main function is what? Tripping uh, purposes. It trips or isolates the circuit from the fault and we are safe in operating the equipment. So we looked at also the contact the procedures. We have maintenance procedures and all that in the material, which we can always consult from the material given to you. Then we have the ELCB, head leakage circuit breaker, and we have the grand fault circuit interrupter, which I said basically this is very, very important. And uh, this um, save for human, this protection, this saves for human protection, human protection, so to say. Because when you are working in equipment and you receive shock, it senses that the potential difference is, it senses that the difference is the potential difference, then it automatically trips. Once it trips and tends to come back, if the fault is still there, it returns back. If fault is not there, it resets itself automatically. So that is why it's very, very important. So to wrap this up, we refer to a circuit breaker if installed within their ratings and properly maintained, should operate trouble free for many years. Circuit breaker can operate for many years if proper maintenance is uh, given. Thank you, and um, we draw the curtain for this class today. And of course, as a recap, we've looked at uh, types and application of protective devices, and I told us that the major protective devices we looked at is fuse and what? Circuit breaker. We looked at different types of fuse, like the reliable fuse, which is common, the cartridge type, the high rush capacity, the liquid type, and all these are for high watt voltages. So you see more in the material given. And of course, in the next class, we can also bring it up to explain further. Thank you.